Today we're going to answer what is a displacement laser sensor. A displacement laser sensor measures the amount of movement of a detected object when it moves away from or near a certain reference position. The sensor measures the distance the object is from the reference position. The sensor then sends out a signal that is proportional to that measurement. So what are some of the benefits of displacement laser sensors? Non-contact, non-destructive measurement of many different types of materials, highly accurate long-distance measurements such as roll diameter or long-distance material replenishment applications, small object measurements such as small connector pin alignment verification or checking for properly seated components on a circuit board, and high-speed measurement applications such as eccentricity, runout, or profile measurements. There are also laser measurement sensors designed for measuring transparent material and glass thickness. Displacement laser sensors have solved many applications and have a wide use in a variety of industries. Let's take a look at the principle of operation of CMOS linear image triangulation displacement sensors. The sensor consists of a laser emitter, a cylindrical lens that precisely focuses the beam onto the target object, a receiving lens, and a linear image sensor. The linear image sensor captures the reflected light and calculates the distance based on the position of the light hitting the image sensor. As the target changes distance, the light reflects to a different position on the linear image sensor. The light charges the specific location of the pixels of the CMOS sensor. The charged pixels are read sequentially, changed to a digital signal, and through data processing are converted into measurements. This intricate process enables CMOS linear image sensors and laser displacement sensors to convert light information into precise distance measurements, making them valuable tools in various industrial automation applications. Another type of laser displacement sensor is called time of flight. When an object reflects the modulated light, it returns to the sensor. The sensor detects the shifted phase of light and also a small attenuation of the signal. Knowing the frequency of the emitted light, the phase shift of the returned light, and the speed of light allows the sensor to calculate the distance to the target. This is often referred to as indirect time of flight. Some devices employ direct time of flight, which sends a single pulse and measures the time it takes for the light to return. Let's take a look at a couple of different measurement methods. Diffused light reflection occurs when light strikes a surface and scatters in various directions. In this detection method, the beam is positioned at a right angle to the measuring surface. Diffuse reflection method allows for a broad measurement range, but it may not be well suited for transparent or specular objects with minimal diffuse reflection. Another measurement method is specular reflection. Specular reflection aligns the incident and receiving angles in an optical system to capture the reflected light specular component. It's mainly utilized for measuring transparent and specular objects. This method has a shorter measurement range than diffuse reflection and is sensitive to object undulation and tilt. So what about accuracy? Accuracy is made up of three things, resolution, linearity, and temperature characteristics. Let's start with resolution. The sensitivity of the sensor's measurement scale determines its ability to measure with precision. For instance, a ruler with a one millimeter gradation has a resolution of one millimeter. I like to consider repeatability. Laser sensors may show different readings even when nothing is changing. Repeat accuracy measures how much the reading varies when you check the same spot multiple times on a target that is not moving. In this example, I took a sensor with four channels and set each channel up with a different moving average. I'm looking at a stationary target, and you'll see that the more you average them, the better the repeatability will be. Okay, so let's dig into moving averages. Even in a static state, fluctuations occur, necessitating the stabilization of measured values through averaging. Rather than employing simple averages, moving averages are utilized. The moving average involves averaging over a specified number of times with the data updated upon each sampling. To show this visually, I used different colored boxes instead of a distances and created a moving average of four times. The sensor records the value of each block and then outputs the average of those four colors. Then the next sample is taken and the sensor averages those four blocks, etc. 
The more moving averages, the less variation in the measured values will be, but the sensor will not be able to respond to high speed changes. Let's discuss full scale measurement range. For example, the CD2H-30A is 30 millimeters with a plus or minus five millimeter distance, which means the range is 25 to 35 millimeters with a 30 millimeter center range. Linearity. Linearity is the amount of deviation between the measured value and the actual displacement or distance value. You'll see in this example the ideal line is in green. The variation from that ideal line is the maximum amount of error that the sensor will generate. To calculate the potential linearity error, take the linearity error percentage times the full range. In this example, the full scale potential linearity error is 8 microns. Linearity can vary by type of material. Below are three examples of materials and how they affect linearity. Sampling frequency is the rate of measurements per second. A higher frequency shortens measurement time enabling higher speed applications. However, caution is needed with low reflectivity materials like black rubber due to reduced light reception. To calculate sampling frequency, take 1 divided by the sampling period. In case of the CD2H, it's extremely fast, 133 microseconds, and we get a frequency of 7.5 kilohertz. Some laser measurement models have automatic adjustment based on reflectivity of the object. Another nice feature is automatic sampling function. It enables stable detection of shiny metal or non-reflective black targets by adjusting the sampling speed on the sensor automatically. If the sensor sampling speed is fixed, high speed and low speed sampling can create errors. With automatic sampling, the sensor will adjust the sampling rate based on the surface conditions in order to get a more stable reading. It is also important to consider temperature changes when working with laser measurement sensors. As components such as the laser diode, the image sensor, the lenses, and the housing for these parts heat up or cool, they expand and contract. This will play a role in accuracy. One potential solution for countering the effects of temperature swings in a factory is to perform a zero reset on the sensor's measurement periodically. Oftentimes there's a zero set button on the sensor or you can do it in the PLC program. Ramco Innovations has a wide variety of laser measurement solutions. We have fantastic solutions from Optex FA, Panasonic, Banner Engineering, and Omron. You can check them out at our website at www.ramcoi.com. Please reach out to us with your measurement applications today. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.